I'm here with a different video and uh, in today's video we have an Xbox One and power supply unit that is not working and uh, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to open it up and how to repair it for example if you plug it to the wall and the light turns orange let's say plug in this one in and the light turns orange when the light is orange and you plug into the console let's go ahead and find that console over here somewhere so the light is orange right now and I'm going to grab a console and once I plug it in, as soon as I press the uh, on switch, it just turns off. There's no orange light or anything like that. So we're going to fix this issue. The power unit could have many other issues, but this is one of them that it's easy to notice and easy to fix all right tool number one to open it it's wanting a metal uh, screwdriver like a really sharp point and tough you need one of these you can grab a screwdriver and just make it a little pointy this we're going to use to remove the bottom four legs at the bottom of the uh, power unit so what you want to do, you want to stick it right under the gum right here and you want to poke it with the force all the way down. Make sure it goes punctures all the way in. And then you just want to lift it up and this is how it's supposed to come out. Otherwise, if you try to peel it off, you're just going to peel the rubber and you're just going to break it. So you have to puncture it right all the way down and then lift it up with a plastic cover at the bottom. So do this to all four corners, there, there, all right. Now next, you need a torque screwdriver with a secure lock on it, and you can get them in an iFixit tool set. These tool sets are really handy to have around the house or shop. So we're gonna be using torque number 10. Torque secure, they have a little pinhole in the middle because they, this is torques, they have a lock, a little turn in the middle, so it can actually sit right inside. So go ahead and remove these four screws. All right, once you remove it, now this part is really important. If you want to continue, do it at your own risk. And remember, you follow the steps exactly the way I'm telling you. Otherwise, you're going to have a good damage or you can shock yourself. So, warning. So next, you want to lift up, put it in normal position, lift up the top cover, and you're going to see a connector that goes to a fan connector. So this is the fan, comes here, just pull it up. Now, you can grab a Phillips screwdriver and unscrew these screws right here and remove the fan and clean it up. Because when this thing goes bad, it's because of the bad ventilation. So clean it up nicely. I made a video on how to clean it up, so check my channel to see how to clean it up. Next, and this is the important part, do not want to touch these two capacitors right here. You want to grab a screwdriver with a uh, plastic handle, so you make sure it has a plastic handle. And what you want to do, you want to short these two capacitors. You see those legs that they have, you want to short them. So if you hear a big, like a pop, don't worry about it, that's not what, that's what you want to hear. You want to short them out so it can discharge. It has a LED light here. This LED light does the shorting, but sometimes it takes a little long time to discharge because of the power consum consumption on this LED. All right, once you discharge, discharge these two capacitors, then you are safe to work on this one. And we're gonna remove the reflector for LED. Just peel it off. Make sure which position goes in. Now, what you wanna do, you wanna lift it up from this end upward it's like a, there's a little tiny hinges there so lift it up from this side and pull it out okay you can go ahead and clean up the bottom now if you pay attention the damage in this one is really noticeable as you can see these three capacitors right here they are like really blown this is like a really nice curvature on the top it's like it has a nice dome on it 
unlike this other one it's like a really uh, flat when the capacitors they go bad they just start inflating right on the top or they just leak so we see these two big ones down here these are perfectly flat these are fine the only three faulty capacitors we see right here the information on the capacitors on the side you can see 16 volt and all the specification that you can see on it so you want to get a exactly same capacitors for this one and I have a few capacitors that matches the settings. You see, this one is a really skinny one and the black one, but the capacitor information is exactly the same. So we can use this one, and I have one identical as this one. They have the same specification. And then there's three of them. We're going to remove these three and place it with these three. All right, before we continue, you need a, you're going to need a solder station. I use this T8-1000 or whatever you want to call it, TS-100. So I'm going to power this on and wait for it to charge, heat up. And down here, what we're going to do, we're going to prepare the board for removal of these capacitors. We need to remove this shielding here. We don't need to remove this end. We only need to loosen up this end. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit of flux right on the top here. The flux, what it does, it just brings the melting temperature to the lower point. So just add a little bit of flux and then we're going to try to pull it up just like this. And we're going to heat it up. So go ahead and heat it up and wait for it. And then pull it up. There we go. Now we disconnected this one, we can just pull it backward. So we can access the capacitors right here. Again, if you want to go ahead, shorten the capacitor like this, make sure there's no charge on them. Okay, we're going to start with this capacitor right here. So you have to trace this end, which pins they go down here. And I know that there is this one on this one right here. So I'm going to add a flux and I'm going to start melting this too. All right, so I'm going to grab a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron and I'm going to bring it here. I'm going to start desoldering this one end and do the other one while I'm trying to pull the capacitor backward. There. So we remove the capacitors right there. And remember the capacitor, they have a little line on the side. It says minus. Okay, so on the board, actually they have a color on this. So the black one is minus and the white one is the positive end. So make sure you put the capacitors in the same position. So we remove this one and we're going to start with the other one. The other one, put a little flux. Grab a little bit of solder on the point of the iron. Heat up one leg and pull back a little bit the capacitor to one side. So there we go. And if you wonder how am I pulling it, pretty much I'm not pulling it straight because otherwise it's not going to come out. So I'm just pretty much doing one side and then do the other one. So I'm just trying to move it this way. So I'm not actually pulling it backward, otherwise it's not gonna come. So the second one, and I didn't, I should add a little flux to make life easier. So go ahead and add a flux on this one. There we go. So we successfully removed three capacitors right there. We're gonna grab the new capacitor and we're gonna work from the back end 
So I start from the back one, this side over here. So I'm gonna poke the capacitors right through the holes. While I'm pushing it inward, I'm gonna melt it down. Try to push this. There we go. Nicely in place. Both legs showing nicely. So remember, even you pushing it, you just want to push one side and then push the other one. Pretty much what I'm doing right now is this one. I'm pushing one side and then the other side. I'm not just going straight. Otherwise, it's going to be impossible. Put the second capacitor. Just place it right there with both legs there. And I'm just going to do this and this, 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 like that. The leg that you're heating up, pressure on that leg and the head, the other one, you just keep going back and forward. Grab soldering on the, on the tip of the solder. Okay. There we go. You have the second one in. You want to grab the third one and the last one. Put it right there. Grab solder on the point of the solder. And there we go. Now they are all three of them, they are inside nicely sitting in place. So the last thing is to put this cover back down and solder it down. There we go. Okay. Now what you want to do, grab the bottom cover. We can go ahead and turn off the solder station. Now what you want to do, you want to put down this end because there's a little gap right there. So we want to slide this end towards there. So bring it in 45 degree angle. Slide it right there and then bring it down on this end. Okay. Now, you should close it down before you do any testing or anything like that, but I'm going to do a test here before and continuing. So the light is orange. And now the light is white and is working. I don't know if you guys can see that. The light turned white, that means everything is working fine. I'm gonna turn it on, cool it off, and it turns orange again. So there's the problem and the problem is fixed. Now you do not wanna touch the capacitors. Be very careful, the capacitors has that. I already disconnected the power and you can see that the capacitor still has a big charge. So I'm gonna shorten this one and you guys are gonna hear that pop, pop. You hear that? And the capacitor is still have, but that means the other capacitor still has a charge. So. There. This one didn't make a big sound, but yeah. So if you wanna discharge them, you can just do like that and it just sparkle and make a big bang sound and it just discharges the capacitors. So try not to do that. Or you can leave it by itself for five minutes and it's gonna discharge automatically. All right, next thing is to grab the top cover if you clean it up, connect the fan right into the jack, bring it over. Remember the, the LED reflector? So 
So open it again and put the reflector in place. Right there. Now you can lock it in place. There. Now you wanna hold it, flip it over, and put the four screws on the bottom. And then the rubber legs. I hope this video helped you guys out. And if you have any question or request, leave them in the comment area and I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. Also, I really appreciate if you guys subscribe. It really helps and motivates me to make more videos like this for you guys. And thank you for watching guys. And I'll see you guys in my next video.